What's up, guys? Welcome back to Cool Fred's Garage. I want to wish you guys a happy new year. Hope everybody's new year is getting off to a good start. My name is Cool Fred. Uh, this is one of my YouTube channels, Cool Fred's Garage. Uh, today, we're going to be working on this 1973 Chevy Impala. Alright, so I'm about to start this thing up and because uh, I needed to move it back just a little bit. And uh, it's a little cold this morning, so. So it's been having, I got to figure out uh, why is it having some issues starting. Alright, so I got the engine running. All right, so this is my 1973 Chevy Impala here. Uh, it's got the 400 small block in here. So today I'm gonna talk about this belt drive system. So this right here is um, what they refer to as the serpentine belt drive or the one or the Chevy one belt drive um, system. So um, basically, what I've been noticing is that this belt has a little bit of uh, wear on it. Uh, not real bad, but just a little bit of wear and a lot of the, um, cause I want to say this has happened to me one time before. Um, so what's going on is I'm actually going to take it off and show you guys the water pump pulley. Cause this water pump pulley has a little bit of like rust and pitting on it, like surface rust and pitting on it. But it's, uh, so it's got like a, what it's doing is transferring some of this wear over to the belt so um and right here on the belt tensioner you have like a little few little uh marks those like your your indicator uh marks to it being uh the perfect lineup so this is like a weird indicator mark that's on this right here but um i want to say this is supposed to line up with one of these here or something. So, um, I mean, the belt don't feel like it's worn that bad, but I have noticed in certain areas of the belt that it does have a little bit of like abnormal wear, like basically where it's kind of like an uneven surface. So I'm gonna fix that today. All right, so this right here is it's a 1973 Chevrolet Impala with a 400 small block. So this belt drive right here is what uh, a lot of guys would refer to as a retrofit. So this didn't originally come with this vehicle uh, or was available back then. So um, where this is from, this belt drive is from a later model um, GM vehicle. Um, um, I got this one off of a, a 92 Chevrolet uh, C um, I guess they refer to it as the CK series so it could have been a Cheyenne or a Silverado but um, it's basically uh, like a like an early 90s GM early to mid 90s GM uh, truck so uh, the trucks are more fav favorable because they don't have the small pump and things like that it's a more simpler belt drive system to what uh, everything that you was need would need on it so um, it's a pretty I would say compact system as well as you know it looks a lot better than the stock system and it gives you the re reliability of having uh, a little bit um, kind of you know a wider belt so um, it's a little bit better performance it has a belt tension around it so it keeps the proper adjustment on the belt um, so I can talk about this system more in detail at a later time, but, uh, just to guy, let you guys know pretty much primarily what I did. This has been on here probably about maybe five, one on six years. I put it on here. Like I want to say sometime mid 2018. Um, of course my theory and what I did, um, I pretty much just got the essential things that I need. Like I said, I pulled it off of a, um, uh like an early 90s like a 92 a 1992 chevrolet uh i'm not sure if it was a cheyenne or a silverado but um it had a 350 
or a 305. One of those, um, I'm not sure if that's a Vortec or before the Vortec, but um, it had one of those uh, later model uh, 350 small blocks in there with the center bolt valve cover. So uh, pretty much I got the stuff that I needed. So uh, the main thing I was after was the bracket, all the bolts, because you need all those bolts to secure it and some of these are like special torx bolts and stuff like that and so the main brackets is this bracket over here and this bracket down over there that you would need to get and i purchased a new alternator power steering pump um and i had the original ac compressor for a while but i had problems with it so I had to go to a new style AC compressor. So this right here is a, a GPD AC compressor. It's a, it's a um, scroll design. So it's a scroll compressor. So it's it doesn't have the vein. It's not the vein type pump. It's a scroll pump, which operates a little bit different. And it proves to be working out pretty good. They say, uh, they say it's a lot more efficient, but it seems to be a lot more efficient. I haven't had any problems with it, so. But the main thing, uh, I got the main pulleys off of it, which is the water pump pulley, which we're going to be working with today. Got the water pump pulley, the crank pulley, and the power steering pulley. Now, some people will go out there and get everything and transfer everything over, and they'll just replace parts down the line as they need it. But to me, certain wear parts like the water pump, the power steering pump, and the alternator, I basically scrapped all that from the, uh, well, I left it there, so so I pulled it out of a pull apart. So I left those parts I didn't need there, and I just took the bolts and stuff like that, though. And uh, and uh, like I, I got a belt tensioner with belt kit from Rock Auto, which that has your tensioner with this pulley, the new belt idle pulley, and so I think you get like you get this tensioner with this pulley, this idle pulley. In the belt and you can get that in one kit from rock auto and of course i bought a new water pump because you need a reverse reverse uh rotation water pump so you can't use the standard small block water pump you have to get one so most of the parts i purchased were ac delco so that's the ac delco new water pump that i got it's been on here since 2018 but it was new back then the alternator was new so that's an ac delco unit and stuff like that so so i tried to keep most pretty much everything was ac delco except for the ac compressor so um i've tried to keep most of it ac delco but i'm gonna be uh switching things up just a little bit um and we'll start with talking about this uh water pump pulley so that's pretty much what today's episode is about just make sure pretty much be changing the belt and that water pump pulley and i'm gonna show you guys uh this water pump pulley so um i haven't had any problems out of the belt drive as far as it like throwing the belt off or um any noise or things like that is just something that i've visually seen um I replaced the belt one time before, I guess after noticing it, just for precautionary measure. And it's kind of starting to do it again. So if I can pre prevent that from happening again, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm kind of after. But at the same time, I really don't see where it would cause any, any major, major issues, but you know, I'm gonna show you guys what what I got to fix it with, and but first I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna get this off of here. All right, so I'm about to remove that dry belt off of there. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is uh, I'm gonna crack loose the uh, bolts on the water pump just to make them a little bit easier to. Get out of the pulley. So, so one thing, one thing I like about this uh, serpentine belt drive system is the ease of servicing uh, the stuff on the car. Like, um, like basically to get the, to get the belt off, you just, 
basically you just uh, put a little pressure on the on the on the, on the um, tension pulley. Now this is a relatively long long drive belt. It's very long, so um, it's not real bad. But it's just like a lot of the markings and things like that have wore off, which that probably will happen over time. Um, and then it's just a little, just uneven wear. Uh, it's not bad. It's not, this belt is not uh, no way bad. But, um, but what I wanted to show you guys is um, the alternator here. So you kind of see that surface rust and pitting on that alternator pulley. And that's pretty much the wear that's transferring over to the belt. And that's why I want to replace it because um, I just didn't want that to keep happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip that pulley off. Um, and grab me an electric ratchet. All right, so I'm about to go ahead and zip this water pump pulley off. So another thing I did too, I spent the uh, the little hub for the water pump. So that's still pretty good. But um, I got the pulley off, so I'm gonna go over to my bench and show you guys uh, what I got to replace this with. But you see right here, all that is like surface rust. And I basically cleaned this pulley up and I painted it. Cause that's, that's the few of the things I took. I took the crank pulley from the donor car or the donor truck rather. I took the crank pulley, the power steering pump pulley. Those were the main things I needed. And I got rid of the other stuff. And and also got, um, I'm, these are like the new water pump bolts I got. So I got these maybe like down at the local hardware store, maybe like Home Depot or somewhere. I forgot exactly. But basically a nice chrome bolt with a lock washer uh, to, to keep it together. And I've had no problems out of it. So, uh, all right, so that old pulley is out of there. And uh, we'll go over here to the table and see what we got. All right, so these are our new parts right here. This is what we got. So we got a, a, a OE GM belt, AC Delco. So this is a new uh, AC Delco serpentine belt. Um, this right here is the old water pump pulley I just took off of there and uh, a second ago while I had the camera on the stand you can kind of see uh, the wear on this pulley. Uh, it's pr possibly not wear, it's just uh, mostly just surface rust uh, or whatever. Um, back when I painted the pulley, um, I did... I did try to get some sandpaper and clean that up as much as possible. And you know, it's like semi smooth, but there are a few rough spots. So basically, um, you rub your fingers on it over, it's not 100% smooth. So what I got to replace this is, um, now, uh, just a little bit of a disclaimer. This right here is a steel pulley from, it's an AC Delco pulley. So um, I was, basically out uh trying to find another ac delco pulley but to me they were a bit pricey they were like i want to say almost 100 bucks they was like 98 dollars because basically this pulley <coughs> this pulley is also included in a uh set that gm actually sells on their performance line gm performance you know where they sell their crate engines and stuff like that so gm performance uh this pulley is like pretty much the same pulley that's in the kit that they sell. They sell that serpentine belt kit. It's very similar to this kit. Um, it is slightly different, I want to say. Uh, this bracket here, like it has like a little a boat in idler pulley. But um, I want to say it's based off of the, the, the um, brackets that had the smog pump. But they use that bracket, but instead of having where you put the smog pump, they have like a little bolt-in bracket. But 
that kit due to inflation over the years I remember that kit was maybe like 800 bucks but the GM performance kit is now I think almost $1,500 with with the AC compressor uh, so um, finding one of these yourself off of a donor car and uh, piecing it together uh, is you know a lot more inexpensive so and I actually uh, got like a really good good deal the way I did it because I want to say for all the brackets and pulleys and things that I got from the junk car now this was back in 2018 so this was before all this inflation and all before COVID so I want to say all the brackets and, and just everything that I needed, pulleys, bolts. I, I want to say I spent probably like ninety dollars on all of that stuff. And then uh, I got the AC compressor, the power steering pump, and all that stuff from Rock Auto. That stuff was very inexpensive at the time too, in the belt kit. So I was probably all into the kit, like probably less than four or five hundred bucks. And then of course later I had to come back and change the AC compressor, but you know just. Like still, I would say, four fifty five hundred bucks for everything. So, um, that's not bad to this pulley. So, um, I did find an alternative. So the alternative I found for uh, the pulley is a March. So March sells a lot of like billet and serpentine belt stuff. Alright, so this right here is the pulley that I got. So this right here is an aluminum style pulley. Um, it kind of looked like it's a little bit deeper than this pulley, but let's see. Let's see, are they almost the same heights or what? What I'm doing is trying to make sure that I'm not going to have to return it but I guess I need to test fit it to see if it's uh if it's gonna work out because it look like it sits in a lot deeper um than this one does so so I may have to end up getting that GM pulley but I guess I'll test fit it and see if it's gonna work because it does look like it's a lot deeper but as far as the dimensions, they look like they're almost about the same. So, let me see. But basically, I was out on Summit, uh, and it came out, it came up as a, uh, pretty much a direct replacement. So, but it looks like there's almost about a half an inch of a uh, difference there, so. Uh, I'm gonna just test fit it real quick and see what it looks like. All right, so here we go. So contrary to like how it looks, it, it actually is gonna work and it's gonna work perfect. It's just, um, uh, I guess looks can kind of be deceiving, but I did kind of slide it on the car just to make sure that it's gonna work. But pretty much, um, this one is a little bit maybe, uh, it goes back a little bit deeper. Maybe that's because uh, I know on some of the March, you know, they're into their serpentine belt drive systems and they have the wide belt kits. I think they go up to like nine ribs on their belt. This right here is a six rib belt. But I did slide it on and check the clearance. But also the other thing is like you notice the area where the belt rides on the original pulley is just kind of right here. So that's kind of almost like middle way here. So that's going to work and work out perfect. And it's probably about maybe 516 to a quarter of, of an inch of difference between this pulley and this pulley. But where the belt is going to ride, which is right here, this has actually got a little bit more room for another belt so it's actually gonna work out pretty good so um this is my first time um using one of their pulleys um so the reason i got this pulley it, it was a little bit cheaper so this is a billet aluminum so this is a lot lighter than this steel pulley 
not by much, but this one, the original style still pulley is heavier than this one. So this one's a lot more lightweight, but um, I like the finish on it. I saw the chrome one. They also have, they also offer a chrome or a billet one, um, but I wanted the black one. So to me, it looks a little bit nicer and it's a, it's a little, it's a lot, it's lighter weight. So, um, and it was a little bit cheaper. It was, uh, I forgot, I think it was like 70 something versus the 90. And another thing, you know, I decided that just to go kind of with the black. Um, I know this right here on my water pump looks like my water pump is leaking, but it's actually not. It's just um, where I had a coolant where, you know, this hose wasn't tight when I was doing some repairs and just got a little bit of uh, coolant residue down there. But while I'm right here, I could hit and touch that up with a little bit of paint real quick um, while I'm here. But um, I'm probably going to upgrade this alternator here sometime soon. And I'm probably going to get something with a black finish. So that's another reason why I chose to go with the, you know, I, I like, I'm going to pretty much try to keep a lot of the black theme. So this AC compressor is black. A lot of the other pulleys are black. So. I'm gonna just roll with that. So actually the paint that was on there turned out to be okay. I just needed to wipe a little bit of the residue away. So I'm just gonna let that be for right now and just go ahead and get this new pulley installed. All right, so here we go. So um, just a disclaimer, like a lot of times when you're, uh, if you have to test fit a part or something like that, you wanna make sure uh, you're gonna be keeping it in good condition. But I already kind of came over here and a second ago and kind of did like a little, a quick little test fit I didn't bolt it in but uh, basically I got this from Summit but it's from March but a lot of times um, Summit will probably take it back but they do they, they will inspect it so you want to make sure you don't kind of scratch it up so a lot of times you know if you're building something custom and you're checking out pulleys and stuff like I know a lot of guys with the, just doing the LS swaps and things like that and you have to test fit things to make sure it's gonna work, but um, you wanna make sure you're able to return it in case you gotta return it. So uh, I'm gonna slide this in here. Just finding, having a little hard time finding the pilot hole there. That's pretty much how it looks. So I'm just gonna smuggle the bolts up just a little bit and kind of uh, spin it a little bit. But there's no interference or anything. Uh, it's on there. Uh, nice and neat but uh it's kind of hard to tell from right here I'll get a little bit of a better shot later but uh, this one like I was mentioning before compared to the other one like y'all saw on the table this one sits in a little deeper so it can run it can run up to an eight rib belt so um, so But the thing is, I assume that with the March set, if you ran the March set, you probably have to have different brackets because there's no way a eight rib set, um, even if I change the power steering pulley, because just the way it sits. But um, when I put the belt on, everything is going to match up. So um, let me just go ahead and do a quick little test fit of the belt real quick all right so I got the belt starting to go in I kind of got to try to remember how I actually took this thing off of here
sometimes that's the issue with the So uh, it is going to work out. So basically, I just have to get the belt routed right. So I'm going to go ahead and snug this just a little bit. And then I'm going to finish tightening once I have the belt in. All right, so. Now I'm just get the oh uh, so a lot of times what I like to do is just uh I'm probably gonna put it on the alternator first and then just loop it over the power steering pump last so Here we go. So uh, the belt, the belt is installed, and the new water pump pulley is in there. So that's that nice uh, billet March pulley that's uh, powder coated black. So it looks pretty good in here. So um, if I ever decide to upgrade the alternator to a powder coated black one, it would uh, match pretty good. So um, I did notice that this belt right here is a slight bit shorter than the other one for two millimeters. I mean, a few millimeters. So uh, it's a few millimeters shorter, uh, but it works out. I mean, it's one of the ones that um, came up uh, as per, you know, when I was looking in the catalog for the um, 92 Chevy pickup. So, but right here, I was mentioning earlier about the uh, alignment arrow here so there's a several there's a couple adjustments on here so I guess um, it's got a few notches here so I guess you can have different belt configurations but this one right here is lined up and kind of pointed like right in there so um, that's how you know where the you, you know basically that's the wear indicator so if it's um, I'm not sure I have to read the service manual up on this system or maybe per that truck for that 92 Chevy truck to see, um, you know, like how, like what, what is considered uh, excessive wear. Like, I'm not sure, cause I'm sure it will uh, be off one way or another. Similar to kind of how it was when I was taking the other belt off. But, uh, so that's that. So I'm gonna start it up, let it run. Um, I know, like I was saying, that this belt is slightly shorter, so the tensioner sits up a little bit, but I guess it's designed to be able to be in several different positions, so it still seems like, you know, it wasn't putting too much um, tension on the belt, so it seems like it's uh, perfect. So I'm going to start it up, let it run, and see uh, what it does, and if everything's good, then we'll wrap this up. All right, so I didn't really get a chance to talk about the part numbers, but um, if you guys are interested in that pulley, the part number is right there. So it's from March. Uh, it's the powder coated black, and the part number is 4300 slash 4310. So um, I'm not sure what the exactly what the summit part number is because I don't have that information. But this right here is per these instructions. But basically, if you go to summit and you search uh for the 1998 to 1994 Chevy and GMC trucks or either the Trailblazer well that would be the Blazer the GMC Blazer so this compatible with the looks like uh the small block um Chevy 350 and 305 the V6 that 4.3 liter and I guess that 7.4 is a big block 
I'm not really that familiar with that particular one. Maybe that's the 454 SS or something. But they did have a bit blocking some of those trucks. Um, as far as the belt that I'm using, this right here is the uh, 192 So um, you can get that at your local parts store or from Rock Auto. And also you can just search by you know those early GMC trucks like mine's was a, the one um, the donor vehicle for this because this stuff can fit any small block Chevy if you retrofit it over so uh, in my case when I search for parts I use a 92 uh, Chevrolet um, it's like a they call it a CK I think uh, the C is the two-wheel drive K is four-wheel drive but normally a two-wheel drive uh, Chevy truck so that's what I search under so uh, thank you guys for checking out Cool Fred's Garage and uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You guys take it easy until next time.